Welcome to the fourth and final video in our LED dimming fundamental series. Our first topic today is how to use the Vantage LED test report. We talked about LED test reports in the first video of this series and where to find them. We did not, however, go into any substantial detail about these. So that's what we'd like to do now. We'll start with the question, why do you care? There are two things that you will get from the test report. First, how well does this LED lighting product perform against the Vantage dimmers it is supposed to be compatible with? Does it meet the requirements of the project? If there are multiple dimmer choices, does the lighting product perform better against one dimmer than against the others? Secondly, what are the parameter values to apply to the dimmer in order to achieve best performance? So we'll take a look at a representative test report. At the top we see the header data which identifies the report, has a description and some salient characteristics, states dimming compatibility and the date it was tested. The next section is a compatibility chart. Each column displays the performance of the LED product against a specific Vantage dimmer. We test against one native Vantage dimmer per dimming technology, which represents performance against the entire range of compatible native dimmers. In this particular sample, which is compatible with either forward phase or reverse phase dimmers, we show performance against the standard dimmer module, model SDM12-EM, representing the line of forward phase uh, dimmers, including the scene point dimmer, standard DIN dimmer, and so on. The next column represents performance against the EDIM mod, representing all Vantage native reverse phase dimmers. For forward phase dimmable products, we also compare against the RFLC universal dimmer, model DRD4, because its characteristics are different from the native Vantage forward phase dimmers. We show a pass-fail assessment per dimmer. In this case, we pass the product against all three dimmers. But just because we give it a pass doesn't mean it will perform to your expectations. There are no standards. So you will need to examine the remaining data in the report to determine whether it meets your requirements. Next you'll find the power profile parameter values that give best performance. We'll illustrate in a moment how to apply these parameters on your, product, on your project. While we can vary minimum on, maximum on, and adjust factor for the native Vantage dimmers, these are not variable with the DRD4. With the DRD4, we simply have two modes, standard or fluorescent, as you will find in the documentation. The best mode for the product is recorded here. Please note that the DRD4 has a neutral. Vantage recommends that you never use the non-neutral version, DRD2, nor non-neutral scene point dimmers for LED loads. Finally, we display the maximum and minimum intensities. Because we apply a maximum on or high end trim to native Vantage dimmers, we may see a slight reduction in maximum intensity, never less than 95%. The DRD4 maximum will always be 100% because there's no high end trim. The minimum intensity, once the parameters are set for best performance, is represented both as perceived, which is on the same scale as the maximum intensity, and as measured. This is because the measured intensity is usually what a manufacturer will publish. It is important to recognize that the relationship between the perceived intensity and the measured intensity is a square relationship. So a published 1% dimming floor is typically the measured intensity corresponding to a 10% perceived dimming floor. We hear from customers from time to time that an LED doesn't dim to their satisfaction nor appear to dim to the published value, where in reality it did meet the published value, but because of a lack of knowledge of the squared relationship between the two, the expectation was a lower dimming floor. It is important to understand this concept. The issue intensifies as the numbers grow. A published 10% dimming floor would correspond to a 32% uh, perceived floor meaning nearly the entire lowest third of the intensity range is unattainable. The next portion of the report is the graph, which shows perceived intensity versus dimming program level throughout the entire dimming range, after having applied the best fit power profile parameters. Here we graph the ideal straight line, uh, which is a linearity curve, the dark blue line, as reference to compare the actual linearity dimmer. 
The red line represents the standard dimmer module, the green line the electronic dimmer module, and the light blue the DRD4. You can see in this particular report that both native Vantage dimmer curves follow the ideal very, very closely. Your eye would likely not be able to detect that these don't follow the ideal exactly. The DRD4's performance, while with a couple of exceptions, is also pretty good. The top end is subject to dead travel because of the lack of high-end trim. The next section to call your attention to is the waveform capture, where for both forward phase and reverse phase, we have taken a recording of a single cycle of the signal recorded at 100% and at 50%, showing both the voltage in blue and the current in red. Finally, we have the observation section, where flicker, smoothness issues, minimum load issues, and the like are recorded. In this particular report, we point out that a, on a forward phase dimmer, there is a sharp current spike where the triac fires, and on the reverse phase dimmer, there is no corresponding spike, but a better behaved current waveform. With this particular product, performance against forward phase and reverse phase native vantage dimmers appears to be a tie, but this current waveform is the tiebreaker. So where there is the freedom to choose, I would recommend the EDEM model but it would be acceptable to use the product with an existing installed forward phase dimmer. Make sure to check out the guide to reading an LED uh, test report on the Vantage Professional Support website where you will find more information related to this topic. We'll now review the application of power profiles to lighting loads in the Vantage Infusion system. With the current project file open within Design Center software, we follow four steps. Step one, within the style profile view, we create a new power profile. There are three types of power profiles, default for forward or reverse phase dim loads, known simply as power profile, DC profile for zero to 10 dim loads, and PWM power profiles for PWM dim loads. Once we select the correct profile type, we double click to create a new profile and rename it so as to represent the applicable fixture. Step two, we modify the three parameters as found in the test report, minimum on, maximum on, and adjust. Step three, within either the area view or the enclosure view, We'll identify each load comprised of this fixture type and apply the appropriate power profile. Step four, if the file is already loaded to the system, a simple file update will immediately apply the modified profile. Note the PWM has an inverted checkbox. As discussed in the first video, if the PWM load follows the standard, leave this box unchecked. But if light intensity follows duty cycle directly, then check this box. For situations where there is no test report available, how do you know what kind of dimming is appropriate for a given LED light source? The answer is usually found in the manufacturer's literature, typically the product cut sheet, but sometimes there is a specific dimming capability document aside from the cut sheet. Here are four quick examples of what you might find and how to interpret. Look for statements of dimmability. The information isn't always found in a single location, so make sure to scan the entire document. In this example, the product description states that the product is dimmable with most standard incandescent dimmers and electronic low voltage dimmers. Further along, there is a, dimming, a dimmer compatibility statement that clarifies that electronic low voltage dimmers are recommended for best results. Without reviewing the entire document, I might have been inclined to assign loads to the standard dimming module, but with this additional information, I would definitely assign to an electronic dimming module. I would add a caveat that if possible, test before committing. In the hundreds of products I have examined, I have found three examples where the manufacturer's literature was wrong typically where the author is confused about the meaning of dimming terminology. Sometimes the manufacturer doesn't state the dimming technology but instead gives a list of acceptable dimmers. We may need to examine the acceptable dimmers to determine what dimming technology they use. In this example, by examining the dimming technology used by the listed acceptable dimmers, 
we determined that the DM module is forward phase compatible and the DME module is compatible with both forward phase and reverse phase dimmers. In the case of a low voltage light source such as an MR16, dimmer compatibility will depend on the transformer used. In this example, a variety of magnetic transformers were tested against a number of forward phase dimmer, uh, dimmers and a variety of electronic transformers were tested against a number of reverse phase dimmers. The varying results reflects that while one combination may work well, others may not. So make sure to verify the combination of transformer and dimmer before committing to it. Sometimes you have options. This particular product example has three dimming options, 0 to 10 volts, 2 wire forward phase, or 3 wire high loom driver. If the dimming technology is already specified, it's simply a matter of selecting the appropriate dimmer. If you have specification influence, you can make some value judgments. In this case, the 0 to 10 volt dimmer has a dimming floor of 15% versus the 1% with the other two. So I would rule that option out immediately. The two wire is only available for 120 volts, but if that's the application, it requires less hardware and wire, so it is a least, less expensive option, providing the same dimming floor, so that's what I would choose. Please note that a three wire high loom requires a reverse phase dimmer and relay, approximately double the cost of the forward phase two wire solution. Before we close, let me point out a couple of important points. Statements made about compatibility do not guarantee nor warranty the compatibility of the dimmer and light source products in all combinations. A stance taken both by the dimmer manufacturer and the light source product manufacturer. There are cases where adi adding additional fixtures to a dimmer can create flicker and other undesirable behaviors. Finally, a word regarding minimum numbers of fixtures and maximum numbers of fixtures on a dimmer. Minimum load requirements exist for forward phase dimmers, but not for reverse phase dimmers. Pay attention to ratings and reports to determine whether a single fixture is sufficient load for a forward phase dimmer. As for the maximum number of fixtures, for a variety of reasons, the LED load should be limited. Vantage recommends limiting the LED load on a forward phase dimmer to 20% of its rating. This isn't as restrictive as it may sound. For the standard dimming module where each dimmer is rated for 2400 watts at 120 volts, 20% would be 480 watts, which is quite a hefty load if comprised of LED fixtures. Even on a 600 watt wall box dimmer where you're limited now to 120 watts LED load, that should be sufficient for the LEDs that would replace the incandescents initially installed. For reverse phase dimmers, limit to 80% of the rating. For the electronic dimming module, this reduces your maximum LED load from 720 watts to 576 watts. This concludes our series. I hope these have been helpful and useful for you. In the future, we may produce additional videos covering select topics. If there are specific questions you have regarding LED dimming, topics you'd like to see, or feedback you wish to share with us, please feel free to contact Vantage Technical Services. Thank you.